Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. So the first few weeks, 2022, the stock market's been pretty volatile. All those high-tech growth companies that have done so well over the last six months, they've been getting beaten up pretty bad. On top of that, we just had the highest inflation number in 40 years. We had a 7% year-over-year inflation number. There are many reasons to sell everything that you own right now. So in this video, I'm gonna to try to put things into perspective for you. I'm gonna go over all the reasons that you could have sold over the last 10 years. I'm even gonna take you back a little bit further and talk about how the market performed when I graduated college and what it looked like for me for my first 10 years out of college. It was a very different market than it is today, but hopefully it'll help you put all of this into perspective so that you can make the right decisions with your own portfolio. All right, let's get to it. All right, so real quick before we get started, number one, head over to schoolofpersonalfinance.com, join my email list, get the free download, 15 numbers that you should be tracking to become great with money. And number two, I just recently started offering power sessions where we work together one-on-one. -on -one. We have a Zoom call. I send you an invitation to create a profile in Right Capital Financial Planning software, and then we go through everything. And I give you my recommendations. I let you know how I think I'm doing, what I think you could be doing better. And I provide you with a nice PDF report at the end of it showing everything Thing that we went through. So head over to schoolofpersonalfinance.com. It's under power sessions and sign up today. So as we all know, the stock market, it has just been on fire, right? 2021 was another amazing year for the stock market. And we're all just waiting for the correction to happen. There's so much fear. There's so many reasons that the stock market should be going down, right? We're all waiting for that time to come. So I thought that it would be helpful. I came across this awesome infographic when I was reading a blog. I believe that it was by Michael Batnick. The name of his blog is The Irrelevant Investor. Um, but it was somebody over at Ritholtz Wealth Management. It might have been Josh Brown also. They put out a ton of awesome content. So if you're not following either one of them, you should definitely start to. So I saw this infographic and I thought that it would be a great idea if I shared it with my audience and made a video about it. And also talked a little bit about the past even before this 10-year period that the chart shows. So I'm going to share it with you right now and we'll go through some of this stuff quickly and then i'll circle around back to it so if you look at this chart it starts back in march of 2009 so that was really the bottom of the great recession that was the lowest points in stocks so as we can see this chart it is just up and to the right the stock market has really done nothing but go up ever since but we could see all of these little points on the graph that show all the times that it would have been a great reason to sell, at least in your mind. It really wasn't a great reason to sell, but you could have made the argument that it was a good reason to sell. So let's just look at a couple of these things. Like I remember this like it was yesterday when we had the flash crash. That was back in 2010. Then there was back the end of 2011 when stocks fell 20%. So just think about it. If we're coming out of the Great Recession and we have a two-year rally in the stock market and then we get a 20% correction, I would be very scared, right? It would be a very good reason in my mind to be like, you know what? I'm not going through that again. Things are unraveling, right? The Fed, they pump so much stimulus into the market. It's all a house of cards. It's all going to fall apart. I need to get out. That would have been a very good time in my mind for me to think it's time for me to get out. But it didn't stop there. As time continued and the stock market continued to go higher, there were more and more great reasons to sell all of your stocks. So if we keep going here, we could see 2013, we had the US government shut down. I remember that also like it was yesterday. Then if we keep fast forwarding, I mean, look at here. This was 2015, the Dow falls 1,000 points for the first time ever. So we had a huge drop in the market right there. And you could have thought that that was really the beginning of the next downturn in the market, of the next correction, because the market had been very strong. From 2009 to 2015, the market was doing awesome, right? And then we get a little bit rally again, and then the market drops. Once again, we have, you know, an earnings recession on here. Crude oil falls 77%. And then we can see here after these two big drops, it took the market a while to get back to where it was just 20 months ago. So this little mark right here, this is where it says that the U.S. stocks go nowhere for 20 months. So from 20 months prior to that point, the markets were flat. And then after that, we had the presidential election where Trump was elected president. And this also, I remember like it was yesterday, watching after the election results came in and the futures of the stock market, they dropped 5% like that. And everybody thought the market was going to get clobbered after that with all the uncertainty that a new 
president that Trump was going to bring in to the White House. But the market just rebounded basically the next day and just kept on going higher from there. Then we set a new record for the biggest point decline in one day, 1,175 points. That was right here. So we had a big drop in the market. Then it started to grind its way higher. And then the end of 2018, the fourth quarter of 2018, the market dropped 20%, basically like that. And we, had, we were in bear market territory. We had a government shutdown at that time. And then the Federal Reserve decided to reverse course and they stopped hiking interest rates and instead starting lowering interest rates again. And then the markets, they were off to the races again. Then March of 2020, we have COVID, the market gets clobbered. And then before you know it, it's a V-shaped recovery. We're off to the races again. And the market's just been going up ever since. And there's been even more after that. And now here we are, inflation. That is the big thing right now is inflation is very hot. The money printing, the Fed reversing course again. They're going to be raising interest rates. So it's projected they're going to raise rates three times this current year. So a lot of risk out there, a lot of things to be afraid of in the market. So that is what has happened over the last 10 years in a nutshell. And I just love this chart because all of those reasons to sell, they really do seem like very good reasons. And the market just kept on going higher and going higher. If any one of those reasons would have spooked you and scared you out of the market, then it was tough to get back in. Right then, when do you decide to get back into the market? So it's very hard to time the market. Like just imagine if you would have decided in 2011 to get out of the market after that 20% drop because you didn't want to go through the Great Recession. You didn't want to go through that again if the market really took a nosedive. So you just decided to get out and wait for a better time to get in. You really never got that better time. So you could have been sitting on the sidelines for the last 10 years and missed this tremendous run up in the stock market. So now just to be clear, my point with this video is not to say that the markets always go up and that you should never sell and that everything is just, you know, up and to the right when we look at these charts. It's not the way that it works. We just have been on a very good run over the last 10 plus years for now. But the next chart I want to show you is what the stock market looked like when I graduated college. So I graduated college in June of 2000. So I had from 2000 to 2009 where the market really did not do so good. So I'm going to show you a chart here. We'll take a look at it. All right. So the S&P 500 was at 1477 when I graduated college. Now, keep in mind, and I'll zoom this out in a minute, but this was at the height of the dot-com bubble. So the market basically went down, straight down for the next two years, as we could see. So, you know, the bottom right here, which was October of 2002, we were at 879 on the S&P 500. And then the market started to climb its way back up. So in order to get back to that level from when I graduated, to college, it took it pretty much until July of 2007, where the market made a new high. And you know, here it's 1553 in July of 2007. But then we all know what happened after that. Then, you know, the banking system, Lehman Brothers, the Great Recession, the market just completely the bottom fell out and we were going, you know, down hardcore. So if we look here, March of 2009, this is where we pretty much bottomed out with the S&P 500, 683 right here. So from when I graduated college up until March of 2009, the market was down almost 50%. So just about 48% it was down. So think about how I felt at this point. Well, first of all, I was working in the bank and I was giving people financial advice. So it was a tough period to live through. But beyond that, I was saving as much as I can in my 401k and Roth IRAs. I was hoping to get married, to buy a house, start a family, do all of these things. And I'm working so hard. And the next thing you know, it here we are 10 years later, and I pretty much lost 50% of the money that I had invested in my retirement accounts and in my Roth IRAs and everything. It wasn't that bad because I was buying all the way down. So I was dollar cost averaging through all of those years. But then when 2000, the end of 2008 and 2009 hit, I lost a significant amount of money. And on top of that, I was working at a bank at the time at Wachovia Bank, and I made the mistake of owning the stock in the company that I worked for. So Wachovia, if you're not aware, they basically went bankrupt during that time and they were then bought out by Wells Fargo, but the stock went to pretty much zero and Wells Fargo swallowed it up. So I lost a lot of money, not only in my 401k, but also in the regular brokerage account where I owned stock in the company. So that's one of the reasons why I always say, do not 
hold a big position in the company that you work for because then you run the risk of the employer going out of business you losing that money and also losing your job where you get your paycheck from so you never want to make that mistake like I made in the past but now when I zoom out and I take this chart all the way to present day it just tells a much different story and looking back on it that period of time those 10 years after I graduated college they gave me a tremendous opportunity to be adding money to be dollar cost averaging to be buying low during those big market dips even though it was so painful at the time and I hated it and I did change you know I left Wachovia once Wells Fargo took them over I went to another company still in the financial services industry but it was a big blow to me and I basically started over from zero at my next job so it was a tough time for me and looking back on it you know it wasn't easy but now as far as my investments go it was great to be putting in the, all that money during times when the markets were so low if we now look from that period up until now which was the chart that we first originally looked at where the market has done nothing but go up you know it tells a completely different story but with that being said you know markets typically revert back to some sort of mean and we've had such a big move up in the market that you should not be surprised if the market drops 30 percent at any given moment we just don't know what the future is going to bring so you always have to be prepared to have a big correction in the market or to have a 10-year period where the market goes nowhere where it goes sideways but it's still very volatile during that entire time so many people that are young right now if you started investing in 2010 then you know nothing but up for your investments but it just doesn't always work out that way so you have to make sure that you are investing for the long term if you are investing for your retirement if you're 20 plus years away then it's all just noise right now just keep doing what you're doing dollar cost averaging in we're going to have corrections in the market we could have big downturns in the market but you have to look at them as an opportunity for you to continue saving and investing where eventually we'll have a cycle where it will grow and where you'll be able to reap the rewards of planting all these seeds throughout the years now now, there are big risks we do have risks to the economy like for example the dollars being the reserve currency that is a big risk right with the inflation with the dollar printing all of those things are tremendous risks to our entire way of life and things could change the future we don't know what it's going to look like but there are ways to hedge against that that's why you know you have to change with the time so even things like investing in Bitcoin or holding some sort of gold having hedges if the entire system does collapse on you so you're not left holding the bag but now you shouldn't bet everything on those things happening only take a small portion of your portfolio as a hedge in case we have some catastrophic event where the world just changes forever so that at least you're prepared on the other side of that but don't bank on that happening don't assume just because we're printing money like crazy and inflation is going up right now that eventually we're going to be like Zimbabwe and that the dollar is going to be worthless and Bitcoin is going to be worth you know 10 million dollars a coin it's not going to happen overnight but with that said you can take steps to at least be in that game if something bad does happen if we start going down that road so it's always smart to have a diversified portfolio to stay on top of what's going on in the world current events and everything but just invest for the long term keep doing what you're doing and actually cheer for a downturn in the market if you're worried about the market going down and it's going to dramatically impact your life then you're overexposed right if you're not using that money for 20 years then you shouldn't be worrying about it but if you're investing money that you're using that you're counting on in the next couple of years then you're overexposed you got to dial it back a little bit so the last chart I want to show you and then we'll wrap this thing up is if we go back another 10 years so I graduated college in 2000 we saw how the market did for the next 10 years then we saw how it did from 2010 basically to today if we go back and we look at from 1990 till I graduated college the market exploded higher so to have that 10 year period in between where the market may went sideways it makes sense because the 10 years before were amazing the 10 years after have been amazing so can we have another 10 years of going nowhere or, ha or having negative growth it's definitely a possibility but it's just good to be prepared for all market scenarios and don't have your expectations too high the fact that we have been at such a high rate of return for the last 10 years you have to assume that returns are going to be lower going forward that we're going to have a stretch of time where the returns might be negative they might be flat they're just not going to be as good as they were over the last 10 years but we just don't know maybe they'll continue to be awesome and we'll have another 10 years of big double digit annual returns and then we'll go sideways for a while 
just nobody knows. So the only thing that you could do is make sure that you're diversified, that you're hedging against all different types of scenarios, that you continue to save, you continue to invest for your future, and don't risk money that you can't afford to lose in the next few years because it could definitely happen to you. So that is it for this one. I hope that you found this helpful. Please make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this one. I will see you again next week. Thanks.